ಪರಮಋಷಿಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಪರಮಋಷಿಭ್ಯ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಯಾಂತನ್ನಾಧಿಮಧ್ಯಂ ನೈಕರಚರಣ ನಾಮಗೋತ್ರ ನ ಸೂತ್ರ ನೋ ಜಾತಿರ್ನೈವನ್ನಾನತಿ ಪುರುಷೋ ನಾನಪುಂಸಂ ನ ಚೀ ನಾಕಾರಂ ನೋ ವಿಕಾರಂ ನ ಹಿ ಜನಿಮರಣ ನಾಸ್ತಿ ಪುಣ್ಯಂ ನ ಪಾಪಂ ತತ್ವ ನೋ ತತ್ವೇಕ ಸಹಜ ಸಮರಸ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಸದಾ ಶಿವಸಮುದ್ಭೂತಶುದ್ಧಜ್ಞಾನೈಕೂಪಿಣೀ ರಮಣಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರ ಮೌನವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾಕಟಿತಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮತತ್ವ ಯುವಾನ ವರ್ಷಿಷ್ಟಾಂತೇವ ಸದೃಶಿಗಣೈರಾವೃತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠ ಆಚಾರ್ಯೇಂದ್ರ ಕರಕಲಿತಚಿನ್ಮುದ್ರಮಾನಂದೂಪ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಾರಾಮ ಮುದಿತವದನ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿಮೀಡೆ ವೇದಾಂತಾರ್ಥವಿಭಾಸಕಾಯೇತೇ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ನಾನಾವಾದಿನಗೇಂದ್ರಸಂಘಪವೇ ಯೋಗೀಂದ್ರವಂದ್ಯ ಮೋಹಧ್ವಾಂತದಿವಾಕರಾಯ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಿಭ್ರತೆ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತೆ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಸತತ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಯ ಬೋಧಾತ್ಮನೆ ಅಪಾರ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ ಸುಖವಾರಿರಾಶೇ ಯೋರ್ಮಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಭುವನ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಗುಹಾಹಿ ತಂ ರಮಣ ಗಭೀರ ಚಿಂತಾವಿಹೀನ ಹೃದಯ ಚಿಂತೆಯ ದೇಹಂ ಮೃಣ್ಮಯವಜ್ಜಡಾತ್ಮಕಮಹಂ ಬುದ್ಧಿರ್ನ ತಸ್ಯಾಸ್ತು ನಾಹಂ ತತ್ತದಭಾವಸುಕ್ತಿ ಸಮೇ ಸಿದ್ಧಾತ್ಮಸದ್ಭಾವತ ಕೋಹಂ ಭಾವಯುತ ಕುತೋ ವರಧಿಯ ದೃಷ್ಟ್ವಾತ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠಾತ್ಮನಾ ಸೋಹಂ ಸ್ಫೂರ್ತಿ ಅರುಣಾಚಲಶಿವ ಪೂರ್ಣೋ ವಿಭಾತಿ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಹೃದಯ ಕುಹರ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಕೇವಲ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಮಾತ್ರ ಹ್ಯಹಂ ಅಹಂ ಇ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಮೂಪೇಣ ಭಾತಿ ಹೃದಯ ವಿಷಮನಸ ಸ್ವಂ ಚಿನ್ವತ ಮಜ್ಜತ ಪವನಚಲನರೋಧಾದ ಆತ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠೋ ಯಸ್ಮಾತ ಜಗತ್ಸರ್ವ ಯಸ್ವ ಪ್ರಲೀಯತೆ ಏನೇದ ಧಾರ್ಯತೆ ಚೈವತಸ್ಮೈ ಜ್ಞಾನಾತ್ಮನೇ ನಮಃ as it is a talk on bhagwan ramana maharshi's teaching when i entered here itself i heard aruna chala shiva so i will just i will just chant aruna chala shiva then we will start <laughs> ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ this is like a mantra which bhagwan has given us this is the mantra to which through which ramana maharshi also attained the highest the first thing that he heard the spiritual key which opened his heart is the name arunachala ಹ 
Hence, in his Aksharamana Malay, he begins with Aruna Achalam in Ahame Ninai Pavar Ahattai Vera Arupai Aruna Achala. Those who just contemplate on Aruna Achala, those who think Aruna Achala, what does Aruna Achala do? He just erases their eye. The ego is rooted out. So that's it. that is the greatest blessing that Arunachala gives. So all the spiritual search begins with bhakti. Even though Ramana Maharshi is very well known as a jnani, a jivan mukta, a great sage who always taught in silence. For him also, he was a very simple person, youngster, simple youngster. not interested in academics. Somehow that is the common feature with all saints. They don't like school. (laughs) So he was also not interested in school. Ramakrishna also was not interested in school. By seeing these characteristics in them, only I started loving them. So you can imagine about me also. (laughs) I will start with the same subject. After Ramana Maharshi was very well known all over the world as a great sage. About two or three decades after his renunciation. One of his school teachers came to Trivannamalai to have a darshan of the sage with utmost respect did a namaskara And after some time, asked some doubt. To Bhagavan, he asked, I have some doubt. He asked a question. Listening to that question, Bhagavan remarked, Afraid of your question, I ran away from Madurai to (laughs) Trivannamalai. Now you have come all the way to Trivannamalai again to frighten me. So, you can just think, because people think that Vedanta means so much to study. Of course, that kind of Vedanta is there. But Bhagavan Ramana was the embodiment of Vedanta. His Guru is who? Hmm? You know who is Guru of Ramana Mahashi? Arunachala. He has clearly said, Arunachala is my guru. Kutram mutra arut yanai gunamai panit al guru ruvai olir Arunachala. He says, Arunachala, you removed all my flaws. How can you remove the flaws? Flaws means identity with the body. When as long as you identify with this body, nobody can be flawless. The moment you identify with the body, all the flaws, imperfections will be superimposed on you. And Arunachala gave Bhagwan the experience of bodilessness. 
mindlessness egolessness gave the experience of the self swarup atman so with utmost gratitude bhagwan is expressing his bhakti to his guru he says you removed all my flaws mutt means completely and you made me whole purna thus you shine forth as my guru arunachala and what is arunachala swami ji first itself told me question answer session so i am asking question you answer <laughs> i don't want the reverse i don't want you to ask question <laughs> ati sarunachala hey, what is the answer hmm arunachala is shiva arunachala he is hill that is all known but bhagwan says arunachala is the essence of vedanta vedanta te ver ara vilangum veda purul the import the implied meaning of all the vedic wisdom the upanishads which removes all the otherness from you duality from you makes you abide in your own self that knowledge that jnanam is arunachala so arunachala represents that jnanam when of uh, our bhagwan's devotees used to say when when he when we used to come to rishikesh he will say ganga ganga ji is flowing arunachala and arunachala is solid ganga so no difference at all because the presence is seems arunachala is fire ganga ganga is so cool water so she makes you peaceful he will burn you first you need that burning then when it is too much you run to rishikesh take a dip in ganga and what is ganga ganga is bhakti hmm? arunachala is jnanam ganga is bhakti ganga also is jnanam but you can take like that you know the jnanam burns you and bhakti makes you cool shanta surrender hmm? both are needed in spiritual life you need jnanam you need bhakti and you need vairagya dispassion bhakti jnana viraga these three are needed so arunachala represents the highest knowledge where the upanishads declare that tatvamasi this is the mahavakya you are that what you are searching <coughs> is in you as the essence the implied meaning of your own i i am when you know what this i means you know arunachala bhagwan has written five verses five hymns five hymns he has written five verses is arunachala pancharatnam five gems there in the first verse he says arunachala you look like a hill but you are the ocean of karuna compassion karunapurna sudhabdhi you shine forth outside me emanating grace grace because you need spiritual life you need grace in shiva siddhanta they say this is the last principle that one person will realize you will have god realization ishvara sakshatkara you will have self realization atma sakshatkara and the last sakshatkara is what they call as kripa sakshatkara 
you recognize i did no sadhana even the seeming effort that i put was also not done by me it was all done by him it was his grace grace alone made me strive grace alone ultimately appeared as realization once this recognition dawns a little trace of ego even a little trace of ego will not remain you cannot even claim i attained i have reached bhagwan says after seeing arunachala he says neither can i say i have attained nor can i say i have not attained because the i is not there and arunachala is the real meaning of the i within you hridi ahamiti nritya sibhoho in the heart you are dancing in my heart as i i i all this experience came to bhagwan initiated by shiva maharshi called this atma vichara as maha yoga the supreme yoga and it is also shiva yoga the grace of shiva because shiva means the destroyer he is death hence he appeared in maharshi's life first as a death so when you invoke shiva be careful he comes to you as a death death is one side and immortality is one side one side you perfectly see death the body dies the mind dies the ego is removed on the other side you find i am deathless every day we are all having that experience in deep sleep in the waking state the body is there the mind is there i am there the ego is also there i am alive in the dream the body does not exist the mind is operating the ego is there in a different form i am in the deep sleep neither the body exists nor the mind operates the ego sense is also not there but existence my existence as happiness as life it is there so that deep sleep state every day tells you bodylessness is natural vedanta is a very natural teaching it is only just revealing to you what you are and every day experientially everyone is experiencing without body i am without mind i am without this ego i am you have to just contemplate on that state the deep sleep state hmm? susupta upalabhyate shankaracharya says even in the deep sleep everyone is experiencing brahman everyone is experiencing atman you have to just it is not that easy it looks like very simple because everyone is having that experience you every day wake up from deep sleep and sit in your bed and just try to recollect what was that state by sleeping you will not realize but by contemplating on that state a new plane will open up by again and again reflecting how was i few hours before every day you will not get because usually you will wake up to the you will come to this waking state through the corridor of dream hence you will not recollect that that profound state of deep sleep generally after so much worldly experience this deep sleep is always kept hidden but you go on striving one 
auspicious precious moment you will recognize it is a very profound state where the body was not the mind was not the individual i ego sense was not yet something was there and that was whole purna that is why if somebody wakes you up you want to go back you don't want to come to this waking state you if they say it is only 3 o'clock sleep for one more hour you are happy <laughs> you choose that state which is perhaps you may intellectually say nothing nothingness but there it is full and vedanta is giving you this and now this example only to tell you that what you are seeking that great contentment that great happiness that great fulfillment is already there deep within you even now this is waking state and partially everybody is in dream state the mind is constantly dreaming that sankalpa is there and behind that the deep sleep is also there so this deep sleep state reveals to us what is death and what is this i also because when you wake up the first thing that comes out is this i thought so simple when you come from some other country to rishikesh first day you had you were very tired you go to sleep and when you wake up first slowly the i came you are seeing your own birth then the mind just blossoms dream then wake up then you are not sure where you are i think everyone will have that confusion then you slowly convince yourself okay i am in rishikesh india rishikesh so that comes later on desha and kala what is the time it comes later on but you wake up from the timeless to the limitation of time it is so natural and who brought you to the limitation it is this i thought when the i thought arises suddenly you find yourself surrounded by space time body mind everything comes all bondage comes when the i thought disappears everything disappears actually this is bhagwan ramana maharshi's teaching he very beautifully bhagwan says in very play, very many places find out where from the i arises this is atma vichar you are not sure about god you are not sure about anything outside you the only thing about which you are certain is your own existence suppose if we make the entire hall dark pitch dark the awareness i am is so clear you don't need anyone else to tell you you are there shankaracharya gives the simile a lamp needs no other lamp it shines forth by its light like that the self needs no other awareness to shine it is self effulgent we call it in sanskritam swayam prakash it is swayam prakash swabodhe na anya bodhe cha bodha rupataya atmana na deepasya anya deepe cha yatha swatma prakashane so it is swayam prakash you already are self effulgent the truth the atman is ever shining forth in you 
एस अहम अहम आई एम आई एम एस आई दैट इज द ओनली कॉन्स्टेंट प्रिंसिपल इन साइड द बॉडी अंडर गोस चेंज इट इज कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंजिंग इन्फेंट हुड चाइल्ड हुड यूथ ओल्ड एज यट यू फील आई एम द सेम दैट सेम एक्सपीरियंशियली यू फील आई एम द सेम एंड वॉट इज दैट प्रिंसिपल दैट एलमेंट विच मेक्स यू कॉग्नाइज यूर चेंजलेसनेस something the i the i the essence of i the awareness remains changeless bhagwan's initiation ramana bhagwan's initiation is he never wanted to intellectually equip you he never wanted to give you any burden of even sadhana constantly he knew this shiva yoga and what is this shiva yoga it is just initiating you to yourself it is just making you turn inward and look at the simple feeling of that changeless principle inside you as i am hridi aham iti nrityasi he says that is arunachala during this lockdown period many devotees who used to very often visit arunachala felt very down because they could not come then i said arunachala is within you wherever you are you can never miss arunachala because arunachala is your own self that is the truth the outer arunachala you can miss even in trivandamalai even there if you look down you don't see arunachala you have to be constantly looking then also seeing can never give you clear understanding see in worldly life also you see you live with a husband wife for so many years still both are strangers so this worldly experience seeing feeling relating is not giving you perfect knowledge only when you see the truth in your own beingness in your own existence and know that it is your own self perfect knowledge comes so to know arunachala you have to be arunachala shivo bhutva shivam aradhayet to know to to worship shiva you have to become shiva and you need not fortunately you need not become shiva because shiva alone exists he is in you as the i the essence of i i i as aham aham so atma vichara means we call it self enquiry or who am i enquiry it means you are being initiated just you know the power of bhagwan's enquiry was so much that he need not speak like me in his presence suddenly this spurti he called it spurti the pulsation the throb of i i i was so clear for me that was the initiation suddenly when he looks that one look people used to get initiated initiated means suddenly they feel the i just like when you churn the butter gets separated from the curd like that suddenly there is something arising from within it is not the body it is not the mind it is not the ego or what you call the ego suddenly like navanitam we call fresh butter it gets separated from its identity with the body the mind the intellect and shines forth as i i i i i as aham 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 bhagwan called it as spurti shankaracharya also referred to it in many places as spurti spurana in kashmir kashmir shiva tradition they also use this word 
ది స్ఫూర్తి ది స్ఫురణ ద గురు వాట్ డస్ ద గురు డూ హీ జస్ట్ మేక్స్ యూ రికగ్నైజ్ దట్ పల్సేషన్ విత్ ఇన్ వెన్ ఏ గురు ఇనిషియేట్స్ యూ విత్ ఏ మంత్ర మంత్ర ఈస్ ఆల్సో ఏ స్ఫూర్తి బట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆర్టిఫిషియలీ క్రియేటెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ అవుట్ సైడ్ అవుట్ వర్డ్లీ హీ ట్రాన్స్మిట్స్ యూ దాట్ బట్ లేటర్ ఆన్ దాట్ స్పందన దట్ త్రాబింగ్ ద మంత్ర ఫస్ట్ యూ చాండ్ then the mantra becomes mental then it becomes deep down it throbs as para pashyanti madhyama vaikhari it throbs deep within and merges in the eternal current the spurti in bhagwan's case bhagwan never initiated people directly to mantra he made them see the japa that is happening inside involuntarily the japa which is done by the inner being the antaryami hmm? the japa which the antaryami is doing inside as aham aham i i i i i this is you just you have to you have to just see it now you have to just see it now turn inward and just question what is this i become bhagwan him his own experience of death in the first he says i felt the body is dead now it will be taken to crematorium will be burnt there and he suddenly had a vision that the body is burnt i am not the body and i feel the full force of personality within me and there was a strange fascination see there here lies the clue for self enquiry maharshi says there was a strange fascination that is the grace of arunachala strange fascination for the mind to trace the i thought to its source i'm repeating it suddenly there was a strange fascination for the mind to look at the i thought and to follow the i thought to the source to the heart from where the i arises it happened for a few minutes suddenly he found that the i was blown out the i sense the er- was erased and from that source arose something profound ahamayam kuto bhavati chinvatah ai patatyam nija vicharanam aham inasha bhaji aham aham taya spurati hrt swayam parama purna sat when the i is traced deep within the i is blown out in the heart and in the ashes of that i shiva dances there as i pure pulsation pure spurti of consciousness you may call it kundalini or anything but for jnana yogi the 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 heart is the center the hridayam bhagwan calls it as hridayam there happens the experience hmm? there he feels as nitya shuddha buddha mukta swarupa it is body free mind free ego free it is pure akasha in aksharamana male bhagwan says when all the subtle thoughts are all quieted then that akasha reveals nun yen alai irum endru arunachala when all the thoughts are quelled then vin uru hmm? that infinity that space of the atman akasha it shines forth within so this experience can come but for spiritual practice the initiation is just making you just making your attention just as you the ganga is constantly flowing you just enter the stream take it deep there like that inwardly there is a constant ganga a dhara hmm? shankaracharya has given the same simile like ganga he says jnana dhara 
ஆத்மாத்வ கிரிஜாமதி சஹச்சராக பிராணா ஷரீரம் கிரகம் அதில் என்னது இஸ் த பாடி இஸ் காஷி அண்ட் திஸ் கரண்ட் ஆஃப் ஞான இஸ் கங்கா காஷிக்ஷேத்திரம் ஷரீரம் திரிபுவன ஜனனி வியாபினி ஞானகங்கா த ஞானகங்கா த ஞானகங்கா இஸ் திஸ் கான்ஸ்டன்ட் ஸ்பந்தன த்ராபிங் வித் இன் யூ ஐஸ் ஐ ஐ ஐ ஐ ஐ வாட் எவர் சாதனா யூ மே பி டூயிங் யூ மே பி டூயிங் சம் மெடிடேஷன் ஆன் ஃபார்ம் ஆர் யூ மைட் பி டூயிங் சம் மந்திர ஜப anything you can do the upanishadic tradition itself is like that you do some upasana and then slowly turn your mind towards the awareness within you who is doing the sadhana who is chanting the mantra who is meditating who is the meditator even meditation is not the thing find out the meditator who is the meditator i am meditating and who is this i what is this i what is this i it's a constant turning inward and trying to locate the i in the heart when you feel angry who is angry because anger is an energy you can look at it as i can look at this mic so do you can look at it suddenly you feel angry and you ask who is angry i and what is this i i i i i i i you stay with it you stay with it you know sometimes bhagwan maharshi used to initiate people into this very in his own method i have repeated this incident in many satsang because it's very very um is a great revelation one seeker asked maharshi how to do self enquiry because when i try to enquire who am i the i is not palpable i am not able to hold it and he was an inmate of ashram so he said bhagwan i am striving for so many months or years you said enquire who am i but i cannot catch the i i am not able to catch the i bhagwan did not even look at him he asked this question and she simply was looking at the vacant space quiet still no answer you can see in talks also many places no answer no answer because why unnecessarily answer no answer so he asked then he knew bhagwan's nature he waited for some time left it there then he went for his work in kitchen then the kitchen in charge person he asked why are you late he said i had some other job i have not come here to do all this work i have come here for self realization then the other person said you think self realization will fall from sky you know i have also come for that and this person said something to him he said something to him and he said i will show you who i am and he also said do you think i am somebody who can you can play with me like that suddenly he found bhagwan standing there <laughs> in between suddenly he found maharshi standing there he blushed he felt very ashamed bhagwan said don't be ashamed this is the moment you have to catch hold you are you said you are not able to catch the i see how even i can see that i <laughs> the i is so clear so much it has come out now i i i see this that is why you need the presence of a master you know the moment your i puts its head out he will pounce hmm? otherwise you know if you try to do it you will safely very beautiful meditation room meditation seat keep a coffee near and try to meditate chant om and safely take one photo if you want meditation 
that is what all people do everywhere i am seeing in the ganga banks also people uh, sitting like this take some photo and they will put in some magazine you will have more samsara no moksha so real meditation is something you know just explodes within you when the master comes to you with this about 15 16 years i used to give talks in one of our ramana ashram in palakkad when couple used to come every day and their children small children 4 uh, years 5 years they will be lying in their lap and they will go to sleep while the talk will be happening they will be but listening something will go inside so now they have all become family people now very grown up so Uh, one day that mother came to me and she said i was getting angry to my son he was only 5 or 6 years old i said you are not listening to me i feel very angry to you then that boy said mother very calmly he said amma you enquire to whom this anger comes <laughs> see the power of satsang <laughs> hmm? the power of satsang and she said suddenly my attention was put there hmm? so this anyone can help you no when when you become angry who is angry find out when because anger meditation means you need immense energy when you become angry there will be so much energy there it's like a fuel very powerful fuel and you go inside a room close inside a room and just look at that energy that anger actually you need not even ask to whom the anger comes you just see it then you find the entire anger is i thought the entire anger is i thought it is i i i because if someone tells insults somebody no anger will come but if he insults this body mind the very reaction is this explosion of emotion as anger and that anger is i thought bhagwan calls it aham vritti i thought just you stay with that anger don't try to remove that anger don't push it aside just watch that anger where that anger arises when you look at it the anger energy will come like this go deep within come like this go deep within and then you find it will just go inside and there will be profound samadhi for few moments it will not be shashvat for few moments that emotion will just merge in the inner ocean and there you have to recognize that ocean is you the emotion is not you the emotion just arises and goes back in a substratum and that substratum is your real nature that base is your real nature there everything arises goes back even me 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 arises there goes back that is why i first told you deep sleep that is the state where you see yourself without me the me is not there but existence is there the i thought is not there but self is very much there like that jagrat sushupti bhagwan says jagrat sushupti you are awake perfectly alert and the i thought the me the so called self is erased but you find something profound which is very very wholesome very very rejuvenating complete is there and that is made of peace 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 shanti 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 and that shanti is brahman and that shanti is arunachala and that bhagwan calls as self realization 
but generally it will happen for a few moments again the mind will arise people come to trivarnamalai meditate for some day then if they feel they have attained then they go back sometimes it will continue for some more days this meditative state so they will initiate people become guru <laughs> and after some time they find the guru has disappeared all the old stuff comes out so if spirituality of course bhagwan maharshi said nothing is so simple like spirituality aye ati sulabham but you also add he also added one more thing arulum venume he said if you have the grace of bhagwan protection of that shakti it is very simple and you also should be a simple person then only you can if your mind is very complex this simple teaching is not enough this simple teaching has to enter into you and you become absorbed all your life with that ramakrishna said this is a divine inundating nectar a drop you take all your life the inundation is there like that there was all many close devotees of bhagwan maharshi once they got it all their life they were inundated if you get a true spiritual wisdom if the satsanga is really effective then it transforms you the resolve comes from within this is my life i don't want to commercialize it take it to the world world is no more important hmm? swami vivekananda has said somewhere very beautiful words he said let a few souls live for god and for god alone and let the world go have no compromise if such a resolve is there inside atma vichara is very easy self inquiry is very very easy aye ati sulabham atma vidya aye ati sulabham bhagwan said sulabham means so simple this path of self inquiry is so direct and simple nothing is so simple like that because it is your own existence you have to just be sincerely inward and enquire what is within me the body is there and something is within me what is within me in my childhood i was born in a very very vedic village those days there were vedic scholars many so there it's all collective living so along with all celebrations another gift also another opportunity also will come that is to see so many deaths so many deaths so the body will be kept there all rituals will be done because they were all brahmins so so many rituals will be there before they take the body so i used to sit there and what happened to this body yesterday he was speaking to me now not speaking yesterday somebody was seeing through that eyes now no one is there the eyes are there but the the person was no person is not there and nobody is listening and the body is not walking why not it walk to the cremation ground so much trouble for others to take it it, it cannot walk so what is that i hmm? this was like a contemplation those days hmm? the upanishad says ena roopam rasam gandham shabdan sparshan maithunan etenaiva vijanati kimatra parishishyate the katopanishad says that which within you looks through the eyes hears through the ears tastes through the tongue feels the touch through the skin what is that 
and that is the truth which you are enquiring on achiketa so this self you have to find out within you and to find it is atma vichara for bhagavan ramana maharshi it happened very quickly but generally for all the aspirants they have to dedicate their life to find that truth and accept all the natural forces around and discipline your life in such a way that you will have a full spiritual life and of course you might be having your own worldly occupation employment but inwardly you take a resolve that now this is important to me this is my goal so outwardly for livelihood you might be doing many things but the other time when you get time your chief occupation is bhakti jnana vairagyam once you take this result now daily happily you start practicing this enquiry inwardly whatever thought may arise within you you enquire to whom this thought comes you see to whom this thought comes it is to me and what is this feeling of i this i is aham vritti and next is aham spurti it drops then you hold on to it hold on to it then you find that you have a mantra in your being some throb of awareness the mantra is not made through words it is not made by words it is pure throb of something which is neither mind nor purely consciousness some deep spiritual well beingness it throbs within you hold on to it hold on to it hold on to it it takes you to the ultimate realization where you recognize that your real self is absolutely free it is nitya mukta as bhagwan says freedom is your name liberation is your name it is your real name it is your real self hmm? atma means mukti the self means liberation the very nature of the self is ever liberated that is why sometime realization will happen like this for a mature aspirant when he comes to the master the master tells him tatvam asi finished over he becomes established in that aham brahmasmi i am that brahman he becomes established in that he enters the hermitage as a worldly person or a seeker while he comes out he will be with light that simple vedanta is for the mature person but for the unprepared all the prerequisites we have to see where we stand we cannot simply claim that i have this so be humble there hmm? you should you need the humility also because a little bit of spirituality will give you joy you are able to meditate for half an hour that itself you feel gained oh today i had half an hour meditation that is happy then slowly you feel gratitude to the guru parampara to all the saints who have helped you everywhere see even in buddhist tradition they say before meditation uh, expand yourself uh, send waves of gratitude to the east to the west to the south to the north we also do that every day sandhya vandanam standing and worshiping the east worshiping the west worshiping the north worshiping the south worshiping the sky worshiping the earth because the heart feels the gratitude then real meditation happens even after finishing the meditation also the first thing that they do is just stand up touch the earth worship the bhumi and throw the heart outside and see everything as divine once 
the self is revealed inside then you behold everywhere the same self hmm bhagwan arunachala panjaratnam the last verse bhagwan says um, everything is arunachala and the jnani who has realized that everything is arunachala he will constantly worship arunachala by ananya bhakti anya means other ananya means no other ananya preetya sajayati arunachala tvai sukhe magra he will be in that sukha immersed in that bliss of self realization and he will be looking at everyone as the self no bheda no difference at all no separation and that very look of a jivan mukta a liberated soul is initiation that is why people never felt the need for maharshi to speak he just look was enough hmm? just a glance from him initiated his very maunam was a constant eloquence very powerful eloquence he was in maunam but people felt he was talking there are uh, instances where people felt maharshi spoke in their language but he never spoke in kashmir some people some devotees came with lakshman ju acharya lakshman ju and they brought one servant also with him he was an illiterate these people were speaking to maharshi in english one day this servant asked why unnecessarily you speak to him in english baba ji is no in kashmiri he spoke to me in kashmiri but bhagwan will not speak kashmiri he felt bhagwan's maunam is so perfect communication that it it was as if he spoke in kashmiri because the maunam animals also understand birds also understand plants also understand and maunam means what it is not keeping the mouth shut it means the knowledge of the self is maunam when there is perfect powerful knowledge of the self whether the teacher speaks or keeps silent it will be eloquent the eloquence of brahma vidya will be incessant there is an incident anecdote narrated by shankaracharya when a disciple went to the guru and stayed with him for one year but guru never gave him any teaching then the disciple asked master i have been with you for one year samvatsaram and you did not teach me and the guru said i was constantly teaching you you did not get get it bruma hakkalu tvam tu na vijanasi i was constantly telling you but you could not get get it hmm? and the disciple and shankaracharya adds avachanenaiv brahma provacha he spoke brahman without uttering a word even a single word without uttering any word he spoke he, he transmitted the knowledge of brahman but you should not take it as general generally you go to a teacher ask get it in the verbal form because our mind is so much verbose so to stop that you need verbal teaching and that teaching must be taken inside meditated contemplated deeply and then the mind gains subtlety to go within and locate the self in the heart recognize the self in the heart then it abides there then it goes beyond all teaching panditiyam nirvidya balyena tishtaset then the jnani becomes like a child innocent like a child and he becomes absolutely free becomes a friend of all sarva bhuta suhrut shanto jnana vijnana nishaya pasyan madatmakam vishvam na vipadyet vai punaha he has no duality no enemy no speciality anywhere he just moves about free as the friend of all absolutely light free no attachment 
till one reaches that state one should not be in a haste to give to make an institution or anything the joy of sadhana you don't have in becoming a guru <coughs> real joy is you stay somewhere enjoy the deep innerness the, the treasure that is within you once you own that treasure perfectly naturally it will go out <coughs> and that treasure is very deep it is though it is impersonal it transcends personality and it is more personal also it knows which disciple to come to whom it must be given and who will get initiated from there who will realize every omniscience will blossom there omniscience will happen all knowingness will happen there so that kind of power is there within you within everyone as buddha said his last teaching atma deepo bhava he said be a light unto yourself because the light is in you <coughs> you are the light and the body mind is all darkness you remove it you find the light there the self effulgent thing is there swayam prakasha is there <coughs> and that light is arunachala that is why once in a year they light a big cauldron in arunachala it's just symbolically to tell that he is the fire within you is the light within you i think that there is no need for the i to think the thinking is not your real nature maunam is your real nature and atma vichara is this <coughs> strive to be quiet still अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल शिव अरुणा